In an emergency, mariners need all the resources available to them. But most mariners don't get to see the contents of their life raft survival pack until they need it. Look out, you guys, it's coming this way. This video demonstrates the content and use of life raft survival packs. What now? We better see what kind of equipment we have. Let's get organized. There are three types of survival packs in U.S. Coast Guard approved life rafts. Some are SOLAS approved. SOLAS stands for Safety of Life at Sea. This is the international standard for marine safety items, including the contents of life raft packs. Non-SOLAS coastal packs are found in life rafts normally limited for use within 20 miles of shore in cold water and within 50 miles in warm water. Coastal packs do not contain flares, water, food, first aid, or thermal protective aids. Solus B packs are approved for use in cold water 20 to 50 miles offshore. Solus B kits do contain flares and thermal protective aids. Solus A life raft packs are approved for use beyond 50 miles from shore. Solus A packs are the most complete. Solus A packs contain the most flares as well as food, water, and related items. Your life raft canister will be stamped with the type of pack it contains. Know what kind of pack is in your raft and what it contains. During your life raft's annual inspection, equipment is checked and replaced if needed. Make sure your life raft repacker is factory authorized for your brand of life raft to ensure a proper repack. Your vessel should have an abandoned ship bag with supplies to add to your resources. In a survival situation, knowing how to use the equipment is just as important as having the equipment. Studies of casualties show that people who are familiar with their safety gear and who follow a prioritized response have a better chance of surviving an emergency. It'll save your life. If you know what to expect and you learn how to trust your equipment, I think that's really important. That the equipment does work and, and if you know how to use it, if you know what to expect is going to happen, you can use it and, and you won't be surprised. There are seven steps to follow when your life depends on your life raft and its contents. Your first priority is recognition. Don't abandon the vessel until it is more dangerous to be on the vessel than in the water or life raft. Once you abandon the vessel, you and your crew are still in danger. As you abandon ship into your life raft, take as much with you as you can. Unless the vessel is on fire, Stay tied to the lee side of your vessel as long as it is safe to do so. Tied to the vessel, you will be a bigger target for rescuers and you'll remain close to your last reported position. It was immediately obvious because the boat was at such a tilt that we could hardly stand on deck and it was getting worse and worse. The, and the galley and the folks were, were full of water. Yeah, they were totally flooded. It seemed like there wasn't even any discussion among us. Yeah. We were all on the same page. The consensus yeah. was unanimous. We have to abandon ship. When it's time to cut loose from the vessel, you'll find a safety knife in a sheath just inside or outside the life raft's door. Uh, it looks like she's gonna sink. I think we better cut it. Oh, there's a knife, Tony, right there. The knife can be used to cut the painter line to the vessel. An extra knife is found in all life raft equipment packs. Second, take inventory of what you have that can help or hurt you in your situation. Be aware of sharp objects that can puncture the life raft. Remember that you have useful things in your pockets, items taken from the vessel as well as the contents of your pack. Inventory includes people, equipment, weather, location, and natural resources. A priority is accounting for your crew. 
The life raft can move faster in the wind than a swimmer can. Use the rubber ring or coit and line that is always found near the life raft opening to throw to the person in the water. When we were in the raft, I think we just made sure that everybody was safe and there and, and said, great. And then we, uh, then we looked around for things that were floating from the vessel that were hopefully we could use. Uh, we saw packages of lunch meat. We saw actually we were able to uh, get a survival suit. Find the equipment bag, which is tied onto the floor. Hey, look, what's this? Mm. Hey, instructions. Follow the immediate action instructions. Locate the survival instructions in the pack. It is vitally important to secure the contents of your survival pack at all times. Loose items can be lost damaging to you or the life raft, or be swept out the door by a wave. Well, it looks like you cut yourself pretty bad getting off the boat. You better take care of that. Got a first aid kit and a life raft kit. Assess yourself and others for injuries. First aid supplies are found in Solus A and B packs only. <sighs> to keep us from all getting seasick, maybe we should take some of these pills. Let's do that. I got them out of the kit here. Here's some seasick pill. If there is any kind of sea running, find and take the seasickness pills. Even if you usually do not experience seasickness, you will probably succumb to seasickness in a life raft. Well, we were really seasick, and we thought maybe if we ate something we'd feel better, but we didn't. <laughs> it was got it got worse. You, you didn't happen to catch that last weather forecast. Did you there, Captain? Evaluate the weather. I did hear the last forecast. It's supposed to pick up a little bit out of the south tonight. It's good we've got a sea anchor in the water. It's going to hold us on location. You can have additional items, such as a desalinator pump, personal medications, or a VHF radio placed into your life raft pack. The third priority is shelter. Your life raft protects you from the elements and provides you insulation. Keep it tidy. Use the baler to keep it dry. Water was getting inside in the life raft. And that's one thing that was in the survival kit was a baler. We had to bail. If you have two sponges, use one to mop up the salt water on the floor and the second sponge to recover some of the condensation, which in cold climates will collect inside the canopy for drinking. Keep this second sponge only for fresh water. In poor weather, close all the openings to keep as warm and as dry as possible. Make sure the sea anchor, or drogue, has automatically deployed. The drogue is needed for stability and to keep you as close as possible to your last reported position. Adjust the length of line so that when you are on top of the wave, the drogue digs into the trough. There is a spare drogue in Solus A and B packs. If seas permit and you wish to travel further in the direction of wind and current, remove the drogue from the water. If you want to decrease your progress, redeploy it. The pump is used to keep the life raft fully inflated. The pump and valves in your raft may look and operate differently from those seen here. Inflatable floors do not inflate automatically. Find where to inflate the floor and inflate it. Even in tropical waters, you will want the floor inflated for insulation. Some floors do not inflate. They have built-in insulation. Oh, I got one. What do you think this is for? Come here, let me see. Hmm. I don't know. It's got threads on it. Well, let me see here. Well, we know that this raft has pressure relief valves on the outside there, so I'm going to bet you it's a plug. Rough seas may pound your life raft and cause air to be released through pressure relief valves outside the raft. 
find the valve plugs in your pack and insert them if needed. Life raft repair packs vary from brand to brand. The metal clamps found in some brands work very well even in wet conditions. If your tear is small, you may need to cut it larger for the smallest clamp to work. Newly approved peel and stick patches are available for some types of raft material. Due to the water ballast pockets under the raft, you will find the paddles difficult for locomotion, but they can be used for navigating short distances. Caleb, you're not looking too good there. Let me uh, see if I can find something here to help you out in case you get sick. Here you go. Why don't you keep this nearby you? All right. Keep your shelter clean by using seasickness bags. Solus A and B packs have at least two thermal protective aids, or TPAs. In case additional thermal protection is needed, additional TPAs can be added during annual repacking. Your fourth priority is signals. On the radio, send a mayday. Take the EPIRB from your vessel, turn it on, tie it off, and leave it in the water. Even if you haven't turned it on, it will automatically activate and begin transmitting. EPIRBs are not a standard part of a Solus kit. Be sure to take it with you. Other signaling devices should be readily accessible to your lookout so they can be deployed quickly as aircraft may be within sight for just a few seconds. I saw the C-130 and I figured we'd better try at least get a parachute flare off because he knew where we were so I, I, shot, I waited for him to take a bank towards us where his line of visibility would be down towards us at, the, at least give us the best chance of survival and, and so I shot it. Practice aiming your mirror by lining up your target in the notch between two fingers and shining the light in the notch. Mirrors will work even on cloudy days. Solus A and B packs contain smoke, handheld, and parachute flares. Ask your life raft repacker to explain how the flares in your raft operate. They may operate differently than the ones on your vessel. Different brands operate differently. Read the instructions on the flares before you need to operate them at night or in rough seas. Hey you guys, I got a parachute flare here. I'm going to shoot it just in case somebody's out there. I don't see anybody, but just in case. In general, fire one parachute flare right away to alert rescuers who might be just <laughs> over the horizon. Hold the rest until you can see vessels or planes. With the flare in your hand as shown, aim the flare at a 65 to 80 degree angle above the horizon. Turn your face away and fire. Do not fire at rescuers. Parachute flares shoot a projectile 1,000 feet. Be prepared for a kick like a firearm when firing. Handheld flares drip slag. Solus grade flares drip less slag than non-solus flares. This is why only Solus flares are packed in life rafts. They should still be held well away from the raft, horizontal and downwind to avoid damaging the raft. Different handheld flares also have different firing mechanisms. Smoke is especially useful on calm days. Helicopter rescue pilots also find smoke useful to judge wind direction. The cans of smoke float, and due to the heat they produce, they should be tossed into the water well away from the raft. A copy of life-saving signals is included in Solus A and B packs. The whistle is three to five times louder than the human voice. The flashlight has an extra bulb and batteries. The life raft also has an external internal dome light. It can be disconnected when not needed during the day. The canopy also has light reflecting tape. 
Other items may be used as signaling devices. Use your imagination. The fifth priority, water, is only found in Solus A packs. 1.5 liters for each person the life raft is designed to carry. Water is essential for all body functions, including thinking and fine motor skills. You will probably already be dehydrated when you enter the life raft. It wasn't long, about an hour into the raft, that uh, we actually got thirsty, or some of us got thirsty, which was surprising, uh, you know, that quick. I said, geez, it'd be nice to have some water, and then it took me a second to recollect that there actually was water in the raft. Despite information to the contrary, do not ration water for the first 24 hours. Drink as needed. Hey, we better drink some of this water. You hold on to two. Those are yours. You need water to function efficiently before and during the rescue. Most rescues occur within 72 hours. Determine a way to distribute water fairly and equally. Use the graduated drinking vessel found in the Solus A pack. Use this or other containers to gather and store rainwater through the rainwater collection hose. Don't forget to collect your condensation from the inside of the roof, especially in cold climates. Water is usually packed in foil pouches, but Solus A packs are still required to have three tin can openers. Three can openers. What could we use this for? Well, you guys know I did, I grabbed a can off the galley table on the way off the boat. Can of food? Quail eggs in brine. Wow, those are mine. Right on, Caleb. Hey, let's open those up. That's great. Let's yeah, eat on these. That's Good awesome. Move. Well, have either of you ever eaten quail eggs? Not in a can. <laughs> Again, consider seasickness pills. Seasickness can rapidly dehydrate you and can develop into a life-threatening condition. Drinking seawater will result in much faster dehydration and death. Drinking urine is also not recommended. The sixth priority, food, is found only in Solus A packs. Almost 2,400 calories are provided for each person the life raft is designed to carry. We didn't eat anything um, except when your brother produced these candy bars from somewhere. He had some, uh, somehow secreted mm. them. Yeah, they were maybe in a survival suit, but he diplomatically cut them up and gave us each a piece. Mm -hmm. And so we got to enjoy. And that's the only thing we ate when we were on the life yeah. raft. And it was, it was neat. It was special. It was a bonding kind of thing to share the candy bars. Food is important to give you energy, heat, and a positive mental attitude. Other food may be found around you. Birds may roost on your life raft canopy, and fish may gather under the life raft. Use the fishing kit found in Solus Apex. Be aware of the sharp hooks. Determine a fair way to distribute food. The technique we're going to use for distributing the seagull to make it fair is the cat and bligh technique. And the way I understand it is I'll give it to you, I'll okay. turn away, you mention a piece of meat that you pick up, who should it go to, and I'll tell you without looking. And okay. that way we'll all get an even share, and it'll just be luck instead of me being favored. That's great. All right, um, who should have this piece? That'd be mine. Okay, there you go. Okay, and who should have this piece? You can have that piece. All right. Since food takes water to digest, in no case should you eat without water available, especially foods high in protein. Probably shouldn't eat too much of this until we can collect some more rainwater. Tony, how you doing? I'm a little down, Doug. I think I could use a little something to occupy my mind or keep it off of what's going on. Well, here's something. I got you. I, I line this up. Fishing reel. Yeah. And a hook. 
Uh -huh. Maybe right. you can do some fishing. Yeah, oh. that, that'd help. The seventh priority is play. A positive mental attitude is important. Those who lose the will to survive first, die first. Look for signs of depression in your raft mates. Rob is a very bright, uh, funny person, and he's, you know, very, uh, he kept us light, you know, he kept us cheerful and happy all the time, and, and so we both had a pretty good outlook on it. You know, we expected to get to be rescued. We didn't, ex we didn't give up or anything like that. Engage your minds in positive activities, word games, fishing, improving your life raft, prayer, stories, stay busy. How about we, uh, like a near to greatness incredible that's true. Well, yeah, I've got one. My ex-husband claims he's related to Jesse James, and I guess his mother has letters that were written to his great-great-grandmother that had passed down through the families. So I married into outlaws. Jesse James. <laughs> wow. Said, How about you, Caleb? Well, let's see. Hmm. I got a buddy who cooked and served abalone to the Grateful Dead. <laughs> All right. Set rotating duties. Survivors need a plan and routines. Establish lookouts, a bailer, someone to keep the life raft inflated and openings secured. Okay, crew, we gotta keep up on our jobs that we need to be doing. Um, Tony, you continue to be lookout. Okay. And Caleb, what I need you to do is get the water out of the corners there, like you've been doing with the sponge. All right. I'm gonna make sure that the raft stays inflated. In a couple hours, let's say two hours, We'll change shift and we'll take turns. Improve your environment. Keep yourselves focused on things you want to live for. Remember to think like a survivor, not like a victim. Recognition. Remember, only abandon your vessel if it is more dangerous to be on it than in the water. Inventory. Account for all survivors and assess injuries. Be sure to get EPIRB and extra gear. Locate and secure all survival equipment. Determine what will work for or against you. Shelter. Improve shelter by inflating floor. Close openings. Check drogue. Locate pressure relief valves and plugs. Signals. Keep signals at hand. Turn on the EPIRB. Find flares, mirror, whistle, and flashlights and give to lookout. Fire one parachute flare even if no one is in sight. Water. Water is essential to life. Drink as needed, but do not waste. Do not be tempted to drink seawater or urine. Food. If you don't have water, don't eat. But if water is available, food will give you warmth, energy, and help you maintain a positive attitude. Play. Keep improving your situation. Engage in positive mental and physical activities. Be creative with the contents of your life raft's equipment pack. And remember, your best survival pack is in your head. Not bad. Is this an eyeball? <laughs> Not bad at all. There was never a question in my mind we were going to be okay, and I think everybody else felt that way too. Yep, and we all had a, a sense of humor.